What's up guys, welcome back to the vlog. I have some really exciting news to share with you guys today. I'm hosting my very first meetup game at Hustler Casino. So if you can make it out to LA September 10th or 11th, we're gonna be playing some low stakes, big blind anti cash games from 1 to 7 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. So you have two chances to make it out. Jesse will also be there. So we'll be switching tables all night long. I would be so excited to meet you guys in person and just have a fun weekend of poker. If you wanna join the wait list, they're already up on the Poker Atlas app. So just search for Hustler Casino and you can add your name there. I can't wait to see you guys. It's gonna be a really fun weekend. But as for today, I'm playing my first live poker tournament since the end of the World Series, actually. I've spent most of August studying my butt off, playing online. If you've caught those live streams, thanks for showing up. But I'm ready for a change of pace today to get back in the live streets. The Win Signature Series has kicked off this weekend. So let's get in there and go build some stacks. <laughs> We kick things off in our favorite city, a popular destination for this buy-in level, and I want to see what all the fuss is about. So I'm in there with Jack Nine suited, six way limped pot. We all see the 964 rainbow flop. We got top pair Jack kicker and big blind leads 800 into a 1400 chip pot. Under the gun, it seems a little bit surprised by that, but eventually he makes the call. Others fold. I make the call on the button with top pair, small blinds out of there. So she cleared out three of them, but three of us remain on the three of diamonds turn. Again, she's not slowing down. She bets 1600 into 3,800 half pot bet now under the gun thinks that he's beat lays it down i have played with this player though and i think she can barrel quite light or at least that's my experience with her so i make the call the river is the deuce of spades now she checks i happily take my hand to showdown and it is good against her ace six of clubs so she double barreled with the best possible six but it is no good against my top pair and we're off to a great start in this tournament since you guys loved it so much in the last vlog in this next hand and we are going to bring back the multiple choice options for you guys to play along and guess what my opponent has. Under the Gun starts out here with a limp to 200. I'm in the hijack with 10 nine of hearts. So beautiful playable hand in position on this opponent. And I don't wanna just limp behind and get a bunch of other stragglers. So I isolate to 800. Big Blind comes along with a call for 600. This is the player who you are going to be playing along with trying to guess his hand. So he comes in with the 600 chip call. Under the Gun does the same. So three of us see the Jack Jack four rainbow board. They check it to me and just having the aggression pre-flop, there's a heart out there. I have a lot of back doors that I could double barrel. So I'm gonna see about this one for 900. Big blind makes the call and under the gun lets it go. So heads up, the dealer puts out the nine of spades on the turn. Big blind checks. Now that I have a pair, I have showdown value. I don't wanna bloat this pot against a jack that he is slow playing. And I want to be able to call the river after I check back the turn sometimes. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to check back this turn and the river comes a 10 of spades. So backdoor flush draws get there, but it's unlikely that he has those. And when he checks to me, I really don't think he has a flush anymore. I think if he had hand like a jack, he would have led. If he backdoored his way into a flush, he would have led. And if he had better than my hand, maybe like a king 10, ace 10 type of holding, I think he might have taken a small stab. Maybe not. That could be a hand that beats me right now that did not take a stab. But other than that, I think he probably has a lot of under pairs to this board, sixes, sevens, eights. So I throw out a pretty thin value bet, I think just to get called by those types of pairs, I bet 2000 into 4,500. He doesn't take too long before he just calls the 2000. And now's the time to lock in your answer. What do you think he has here? If you chose pocket queens i don't know how you did that <laughs> i did not see that one coming i definitely thought he would have three bet that pre so i just totally value owned myself on this river and learned a pretty big lesson about my opponent in this hand 
<laughs> Shout out to B Flora who suggested this multiple choice idea on one of the past live streams. I really appreciate your input and I'm gonna keep this feature as a mainstay on this channel. A few hours go by, I dwindle down, I get a shove in with ace queen in less than 20 big blinds, and the same opponent wakes up with aces in the big blind and busts me out of bullet number one. My second bullet, I'm in the exact same seat, so time for some redemption. Things are going well so far on this bullet. I've chipped up to 26K from 20 when the same guy <laughs> from the Queens and the Aces hand raises under the gun one to 1700. Low Jack makes the call. I'm in the small blind with Jack 10 of clubs, never folding this hand. You'd have to pry it out of my cold dead fingers. I toss in a call from the small blind. And so the three of us have a little family pot to ace, ace, 10, two diamonds and a club. Checks all the way around on this flop and the dealer puts out a deuce of hearts on the turn. Checks again all the way to the low jack who now decides to bet 3,400. Almost exactly half pot. With a pair and with this passive play on the turn, I decide to make the call. When under the gun one also sticks in a call, my pair of 10 seems to be shrinking up right before my eyes. The dealer puts out a jack of spades on the river though. So interesting card. Obviously king queen, if someone had it, would get there. If they have an ace, they're still beating us. But it does improve my hand a little bit against other tens, but I'm not going to lead out or do anything crazy like that. So I check under the gun one checks and low jack once again bets on the larger side for a three-way pot, he bets 7,000. You will find that when you play multi-way pots with people, they tend to play pretty straightforward, especially when they get called by two opponents. I just wasn't feeling great about this hand. I do let it go. And after a bit of tanking, some table talk, and a lot of squirming out of seat two, he finally folds his pocket kings face up, looks really sad about it. And I think me and him were on the same page that we just felt that seat three was really strong and that he must have just had an ace in this spot. We'll never know what he has. He did fold face down. Interesting pot and a spot that I don't know if people bluff too often. So if he had a bluff in this spot, well played. You got both of us to lay down decent pairs. Under the gun one makes it 3,500. Low jack button, both call. And I'm sitting here in the big blind with ace jack of clubs and the perfect stack size to jam it all in and capitalize on all of this quote unquote dead money. So that's what I do. I stick in 26,000. 500 chips and we get under the gun one to fold pretty much right away. Whew. Low Jack also folds, yes. And then Button just casually slides in her chips to make almost a snap call. <laughs> Was not expecting the third caller to be the one to call me off, but here we are. We find out we are in a flip. Ace Jack versus pocket fives. And the dealer puts out queen, four, deuce, two clubs. So we have a sweat. I don't hit on the eight of spades turn, but I'm guessing you guys know what the river is considering this video is only halfway done. Bink. Uh, nice Just kidding. We do not bink. It's a six of spades on the river. We do not get there. And instead my opponent sends me over to the cash games where I'm about to have one of the most uncomfortable experiences I've ever had playing poker. I get a premium early on in this two five session. I get pocket queens in the hijack and open it up to $15. Button calls and the big blind calls as well. So I'm gonna give you multiple choice options for the big blinds hand. Let's see if you can guess it. Flop comes out, jack six, six, two spades and a diamond. Big blind checks to me. I throw out $20. Button calls and the big blind over calls. So all three of us see the three of clubs on the turn. Nothing much changes now. Big blind checks to me. I'm gonna continue. I wanna get value from draws. I wanna get value from top pair. So I bet out $60. Button now decides to fold his hand. Big blind though sticks around. So now we see the river, which is a three of spades. And now the big blind, it's still early, but he's been pretty regtastic at this point. He leads out for $75, a little less than a third of the pot. It immediately doesn't feel great from my perspective. Obviously the flush comes in on the river. He could be leading something like a six that was slow playing on flop and turn, now made a boat. So I'm not feeling great 
But if he ever leads small like this with a hand like ace jack offsuit with the ace of spades or king jack offsuit with the king of spades and is just sort of block betting so that he doesn't have to call a bigger bet out of me, then I would feel really bad folding this over pair. I think you could go either way with it in reality. I don't know if he's actually leading those jack x holdings. Might just want to take it to showdown and hope that I check back. I do end up making the call just to keep him honest. And if you put my opponent on flopped, Quad sixes, you get a round of applause. Well done, you played it better than me. Yeah. <laughs> so I add on $200 to my stack and look down at pocket aces on the button. The low jack had already limped, so I'm gonna make it $20 to go. The small blind calls, he has a short stack and the low jack comes along as well. So we all see 10, eight, three rainbow, looking pretty clean for me. They both check it over to me. I bet $30 into 65. The small blind sticks around, the low jack has seen enough and makes the fold. So on the queen of hearts turn, when the small blind checks to me, I eye his stack and he doesn't have too much behind, but he had been playing a particularly careful game. So I didn't want to spook him and just put them all in. He was really precious about those $200. So I just put in $50, try to get called by a 10. Then I would just put the rest of it in on the river. So I bet 50, he thinks quite a while. <laughs> he ponders it, does a little bit of a chip shuffle when he eventually lays it down. He later said that he had queen nine. So I was very curious about that fold. I mean, great fold if that's what he had. So we chip up a little bit after that and are back to even. I'm hoping to keep trending upwards when I open 10 of the clubs under the gun one to $15. Button and small blind both come along. I would describe them as kind of loosey goosey. They see a lot of flops. They're mixing things up. So I'm happy to take a flop with these guys. The flop comes out jack seven, six rainbow. There's one little club. So I've got a gutter. I've got some backdoor cards that I can barrel on. So when the small blind checks to me, I bet $25. My phone takes a nosedive in protest as it does not approve of me bluffing into the calling stations. The button makes the call, small blind gets out of there, and the turn is the three of spades. This is not one of my barrel cards, so I slow down with a check and the button checks back. The dealer puts out the ace of hearts on the river, however, so I see a doorway opening up to try to bluff this guy off of something like pocket eights, pocket fives, something like that. Maybe even a jack if he doesn't feel great about it. So I lead kind of large. I went full pot for $100. <laughs> he doesn't take too long before letting it go. It felt really nice to get a little bluff through. Then I open queen jack of clubs under the gun one to $15, hijack calls, cutoff calls. And in this game, I'm just waiting for one of these regs to squeeze us huge, squeeze us out of the pot, but it never comes. So the three of us see the ace, king, ted, two club flop. We absolutely smash it. We just make the nuts. So I bet $15 into my two opponents, hijack calls, cut off is done with the hand. The dealer puts out a brick on the turn and you don't have to be a rocket scientist at my table to have caught on to the pattern that this guy has where when you check it over to him, he's like 95 years old. He just goes, oh, you have nothing and then throws out a bet. And his bet size is usually indicative of his hand strength. So if he bets three quarters of the pot, he probably has a better hand. I use that to my advantage by checking it over to him. So he follows his playbook, bets $30. Obviously I'm going to check raise. So I make it 120 to go. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I think I went a little too big for his britches because he folds and shows me the king of clubs. So he looks like he had middle pair. I mean, I don't think he's ever folding a club draw. So I think I got more value out of him than if I had bet again on the turn because he had been calling C bets and folding to turn. So I'm happy with this hand. If you've made it this far into the video, I'm giving you a little bonus moment that's hybrid vlog review and hand history review with my coach for Coach's Corner. And this moment is brought to you by the shaky internet of Martha's Vineyard. I open queen jack offsuit in the hijack and both blinds call for $15. The flop is ace king eight, all spades. I have the queen of spades. They both check to me. First of all, do you see bet? Yes. Great, the I see bet, but I went $15 because I thought on a monotone board, I'm supposed to go kind of small. Yeah, uh, I see a little bit of big betting on some of the monotone boards. And I imagine this is one of them because we have a pretty big range advantage in terms of like, we have top two and top set and middle set and they don't. I think you could probably have some big bets heads up, especially three ways I would like reduce how many big bets we have, but I think you're probably still gonna want some. And if you're going to make some, some big bets, having the nut flush blocker seems like a pretty good one to do it with, I would imagine, but 
If you want to play it safe and small bet the flop and then just bet bigger on the turn, I'm fine with that too. I think betting is pretty important on a board like this with our hands. Okay, so I bet $15 and the small blind calls and the big blind short stacker makes it 45. Back to me. So it's a little awkward because I'm kind of sandwiched in between the two and the one who is raised only has $210 total to start the street. What do you think? How should I proceed here? I just call, in theory, you probably shove this hand sometimes because it's like one of your bluffs, I guess. Maybe you should anyways, but like in reality, I think it's like somewhat reasonable to just call most of your range or your, all of your range if you wanted to. And like, I think in reality, when people raise on a board like this, I think they're not folding. So I'm not really interested in, in running the bluffs. Oh, but. okay. So that is exactly what went through my mind. I was like, Okay, I have the nut flush blocker, and this is like such a great bluff candidate, especially if he's doing that weird raise to see where I'm at with like ace jack or something with the jack of spades, he'll maybe fold that, but he's just not raising that in reality. And I didn't take my thought process to the next step where it's like, yeah, if he has two pair and he doesn't feel very comfortable when I three bet the flop, it doesn't matter. He has a short stack. He's never going to just fold two pair. He's still going to go with his hand most likely. He's just going to say like, ugh, and then put it in. So I think my mistake here, but tell me if I'm wrong, was that I was overly optimistic about maybe getting hands to fold that are just never folding. Like a king eight or a random ace with a kicker that was a spade <laughs> that I could get to maybe fold that was better than my hand. I basically just raised enough to put the short stacker all in. The small blind snap folds, the big blind snap calls. Any guesses to what he has? An eye flush. No. He has the queen six of spades for the nut flush. Wait, I thought we had the queen of spades. So did I. And then I flip over my hand and I have the jack of spades the whole freaking time. Uh, yeah, that's a I big difference. <laughs> yeah, of course. I would never do this if I thought I had the queen of spades the whole time. Ah, I got my cards backwards. You know, you could just literally double check your hand on the flop every time for balance. If you're worried about like not looking back at your hand, it'd probably just be like not a big deal. And it wouldn't like slow up the game very much. I mess up my hand sometimes too. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that happens to everybody at some point. I felt so embarrassed. Don't don't sweat that too hard, but obviously try not to do it again. So I go to add on trying to recover from this hole that I've buried myself in when a new player sits down and immediately makes everyone uncomfortable with just how angry and hostile he was. I'll spare you the details, but essentially it got hostile enough that I felt unsafe and that a fight was gonna break out any moment. So guy to my right leaves, I leave, and I was very happy with my decision when a few days later I went to go play a tournament and this same guy is getting escorted out of the poker room and is now banned for life. So very happy with the decision to leave and just let the spin up of my stack happen on another day. Oh, that was the weirdest night ever. Wish I could have grinded out of the hole, but alas, it's not worth my enjoyment at being at the table. I want to have fun when I go play poker. I don't want to sit there with angry dudes who immediately assume the worst in everyone. So in for 900. Out for 550, so we lost about a buy-in tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I see you guys out in LA, and if not, I'll catch you guys in the next vlog. See ya.